In this video, I want to show you how to address lists. Here's an example. I'm on LinkedIn and I, he and I have here search results for a certain keyword and I have 10 profiles per page. I've already pre-built a CSS selector that addresses the link, the profile link uh, of every profile. So let me copy it and test it in the console with document query select all. So simply open your uh, console, click on inspect, then tap console, and then use document query select all. I'm hitting arrow up because I've already used this command and I'm just going to enter the CSS selector that I've pre-built, hit enter, expand, and as you can see, I have 10 elements. Now, this is different from the situation that we had before. There we had just one button post and there could be only one button like that. Now, in this situation, however, we have a list and in this list, every profile will have the same CSS selector. So the question is, how do we deal with this? First of all, how can we address just one element within this list? And second, how can we address all of them to save them all to a data table? For this video, I'm going to show you two ways. One is, uh, is an easy one and is unique to our application. And the second one is a standard way of dealing with CSS. So the first is going to be you have here the CSS selector that you've built for that element. Now simply add two greater than signs like this, hit space, and then use NF to show the increment. So like fourth, fifth, and so on. So NF and then equals, and here you can enter the number of the element within this list. If you want to address the first profile, enter one. If you want to address the second one, enter two. So I'm going to enter one and I'm going to test it in the application. Now, this is the case where you cannot test it within the console because this is something unique to our application to make it easier for you. So if I now hit enter, you will see that this does not com comply essentially with the syntax here. That's why let's open Zero Work Creator app. I've already inserted the link with the search results. I'm going to add process website building block. I'm going to save that element to a data table, which I had pre created before. I'm saving it as a link and I'm saving it to LinkedIn profiles, the data table that I had created previously. So let me, let me summarize again twice greater less the greater than signs then space then ns equals one this is when i want to address the first element i'm going to delete the data inside so that we can see uh, whether that element gets saved or not so hitting run now to test it out So here's the task board starting automatically. And uh, let's see, it finished. Now let's click on this. And here you see that that profile was saved. Um, in order to save all the profiles in our application, what you need to do is to use the loop logic. So this is where you use repeat building block you, you define the number of repetitions that you want to make. And this is essentially just the number of items in your list. As we have seen here, there are 10 profiles on this page. And if I want to address all 100 pages, by the way, then you can just use the nested loop logic. But this goes beyond the scope of this video. So I'm just going to show it for the very for the first page. Now, once you defined the number of items in your list and the loop, the repetitions that you want your taskbot to make, there is one more step that you need to make instead of writing here one, because if you leave it like this, the taskbot would save 10 times the first the first profile. 
Instead, you need to tell the bot that the bot needs to go to the next profile with every iteration, with every repetition. For that, there is a uh, unique kind of syntax that we offer, uh, and this is where you use curly brackets, and then you make this addition of loop underscore index comma one. One refers to where you want to start in that list. You could also say two, and that would make your task board start from the second profile. Since we want to have all 10, I'm going to use one, and then I'm going to save it. And I'm going to make it run fast. Okay, let's now start. I'm hitting run and let's see. So now the bot opens the link. It I add a delay of four seconds for the bot to wait until the website is loaded. And now it should save all the profiles. In a moment, I will check the data table if that worked. Okay, opening LinkedIn profiles, as you can see, the profiles were saved. And this by using this logic of NS and then loop index. All right, now I want to show you the second way how to address these uh, elements in a list. The standard way is to go to your console, click on elements, and then identify which element. So let me get this back here. Identify where uh, which element belongs to the to the list. Um, for this, you would need to add an addition, which looks like this. Colon and S. NS dash child uh, brackets and then for example one or whatever number whatever item you want to address in that list as usual. The trick here is that you need to identify where to add this NS child addition. So the question is do we add it here? Do we add it here or somewhere else? And this is where it gets um, slightly more complicated this is where you need to see in this hierarchy where's on which level that list happens but that you sort of need to see right now so i kind of see here this li this selects me the whole tile so and then i see that this is this is where the list is happening so in this case it's li uh, for list but very often it could also be something else like div or anything else. You just need to identify where, where these elements are on the same level of hierarchy. And that would mean this is the element where you need to add that NS child to. So in this case, you would add it right here. This is a standard CSS way of dealing with this. So we can also add it to this uh, console and check the correctness of it. As you can see, we identified the first one. That's great. And let's try to double check with number two, hit enter. And again, this is selecting the second one. So this is great. We identified the right selector. Um, now, in our application, what you would need to do if you are using this standard way um, is simply add this selector right here. And instead of one, do the same thing as you did before, loop underscore index comma one. And that would do the exact same action as before. There is no difference. The only difference between these two ways is that with the with typing twice greater than character, um, you can save one step of searching within the hierarchy where exactly that um, list is happening. Uh, one more thing that I want to draw your attention to is that whenever you use this way of defining 
the list. So if using nf equals just at the end of your selector, after followed after the uh, two greater than signs, uh, then you need to start your kind from count from zero. This is because uh, this syntax has zero based um, count. Uh, structure. Whereas the other one where you add ns child, uh, which uh, adheres to the sort of standard CSS logic, it has uh, the count starting from one. So there you would use one. So again, to reiterate, this one here where you have ns child added to the uh, tag, which increments, uh, would need to be started with one. And that would start with this exact profile. And whenever you use and as child at the end of your selector, then you, you need to use a zero as your starting point. And this selector would address this one, this item. If you used here one, so instead of zero, you had one, then your count would start from this profile on. So this is just something to be aware of, uh, pay attention to it. And if you want to address uh, an element inside your your list, so you don't want to use loop index, but instead you actually want to use specific element. Let's say you're looking for the last pause and you really want, or just for the second pause, so you want to address it very specifically, you would just need to use um, zero if you want to have to use to address the first item in your list whenever you use this way of defining the list. And here you would need to use one whenever you want to address the first one. Hope that helped. Thank you for watching this video.